Hi everyone, um, welcome to a tutorial um, by me. I am Jess Pritchard, a pet portrait and wildlife artist. And this evening I'm going to be showing you how to draw black fur and white fur. Now, a lot of the questions I get asked is how to draw white fur, how to draw black fur and how to draw curly fur. So I'm doing black and white curly fur to cover all bases on that. Um, I'm doing this in association with Derwent. So um, we've got the lovely Charlotte from Derwent with us this evening. Um, you're all muted and all your cameras are off as we're recording this. Um, and also like, you know, we don't want any, any interruptions or anything. So if you do have any questions, uh, just go into the chat and uh, message Derwent in that chat. And um, Charlotte will read out your questions to me so I can answer those as I'm drawing. Um, yeah, so I think I'm just gonna go in and get started now. Um, and I'm gonna start with the black fur, um, cause that one takes the longest. We've got a lot to get through. So, you know, we'll just dive straight in now and uh, we'll switch cameras and so you can see this closer. Cool. So also I'll quickly say, if you can't hear me at any point um, or, you know, if, or like audio or video doesn't look that great, just message Derwent and she'll let me know. So here we go. Now this evening, I'm going to be using a mixture of Derwent Lightfast, the Derwent Drawing, Derwent Studio and Derwent Pro Color Pencils. So I can talk you through what the textures of those four different types of Derwent pencils are like. Um, so we'll start off now. So as you can see, I've already made a start on this one today. Now this section here took me 45 minutes to do so you know drawing is a slow process um don't rush it you know and i know some people get frustrated by it but it, it's absolutely fine you just you have to chill and just go for it so unlike painting where painting you'll mix your colors on your palette um and then you put it on the borders in one flat layer and then you build up layer build up layer all over with drawing um, you have to mix your colours on the paper because obviously you can't mix all these pencils together. Um, and then you build up layer upon layer like that. Now, some artists do like to do one flat load of colour in pencil over their paper. But I personally like to do a section at a time. And if you break it down into sections, then it's a lot easier to understand. And also, if you find you've put a colour down you're not happy with, you haven't put it over the whole piece. So I'm going to start now. I've got my outline here. Now, I'll mention that um, in Zoom right now, I think in the chat, um, you can download the reference photos I'm using this evening. And also, I've created these outlines for you to download and use if you like. Um, if you're not comfortable with doing your own outlines, which is absolutely fine. Um, so here I've got my Derwent pencil eraser. Now I use this all the time on all of my drawings and it's, I just love pencil erasers, it's great. And I tend to just lightly rub out any outlines I've made, just so they're a bit faint, but you can still see them. And then I just use the brush on the end to get rid of any rubbings. There. Now, the best thing to do, you have to work from light to dark. And we're not going to touch the black yet. No black pencil is going to go down until you put all the other colours down. So I'm going to look at the curls. Now, because I'm going light, you want to look at where all the light areas are. So ignore all the black sections, just focus on the light sections look at the fur and look at the direction the fur is going in. So I'm working on a curl right now and I'm using Derwent Light Fast Mist colour to get this base colour down. And I'm just going to roughly colour in the direction I can see this curl going. Now this bit you don't need to be too precise about because I mean you can colour that way and if you realize it's wrong, don't worry, just go back that way. But this base color is great for figuring out which way the fur is going because you're going to put layers over the top of this. So this is more of a guide to you if you do it this way. So 
get this and then put a curl there like that so you just got to keep looking at your paper where your outlines are looking back at your reference photo and looking at which way the curls are going now i tend to do a few curls around and i just do like a little section of these before putting any other colors down so it's going that way so you can see this fur is going that way and then this fur is going that way now if you find at any point you go you do go wrong don't worry because i mean curly fur it moves around and it's this is exactly how it was at the time the photo was taken so if you do one curl the wrong way like don't panic about it it's absolutely fine so got those there and then I'm just going to do this section here as well and then this curl also goes this way and then straightens up like that there and then I've got a few little wisps around here so I'm just going to put a few little areas in like that now the reason I do this as well is you, you've got to cover the white paper because obviously it's black you don't want the white showing through now you see on all these light areas here you would think that that's white but that's actually gray and like it's this gray and it makes a big difference um because it makes your fur look more black and glossy rather than having loads of white showing through so i've done that and now i am going to put in some blue and you think what <laughs> you're drawing black fur not blue fur <laughs> but you'd be surprised the amount of colors that um, fur reflects especially white fur which i'll show you shortly um, but this really helps to add depth to the fur and it's all about layers just like you know donkey says in shrek he says onions have layers well i say drawings have layers so i don't want to put blue all over every single one of these so i'll just mention that um this is derwent light fast mid ultramarine that i'm using for this color here and also the fur in this picture is quite and like the reference photo is quite a um it's got a colder light on it so i'm using a cooler gray and i'm using the blue or uh, if it was like a warm light to so say it was a sunset and the, the light was catching the fur there'd be a lot more yellows and a warmer gray in it so that's just one thing to bear in mind now there is a little bit of a brown in it so i'm using here the don't like fast yellow ochre there you can see and I'm just adding a few. Now, what's good to remember is you're, you've put your guide down on the base layer of the direction of the fur. So as you're doing this, make sure you're keeping in the same direction that you've drawn the curls of the fur. So these layers, as you layer up and gradually get like to, more towards the black, you want to be less boisterous with your, um, with your colors. You wanna just do these strokes like this just add them in and you will hardly see these colors you will hardly see the blue but they just show through that little bit and it just gives it that depth there so so got some purple going on here So I like to add some purple in as well because there's you'd be surprised there's a lot of um, purple in a lot of pictures especially in shadows as well so as we're doing black fur you need to add a little bit of purple because it's all very dark and lots of shadows in it so this purple I'm using here is the Derwent Studio Imperial Purple okay um I've just been told we're having a few network issues, so uh, we're just sorting that out. But hopefully you can hear me still, and I'm going to carry on. And then if there's any problems, we'll just try and reconnect. Um, so yeah, so if at any point I cut out, you need me to repeat anything, just let me know. Okay. 
So here we have a little bit more purple. I'm not adding too much purple, just a tad. Just like that and still going in the direction that I've drawn the base layer of the fur. Now I think I'm going to go back and add a little bit more blue. Now I just want to say that the difference between the Studio and Lightfast pencils here, Lightfast pencils are lovely and creamy. Um, they're actually a lot of artists' favourite pencils to use the Lightfast R and um, I really like them as well. Um, they're a good all round pencil. I would say and then you've got the studio pencils which are a lot firmer and um, they're a lot harder tipped um, so they don't wear down as quickly as the light fast which means they stay sharper for longer which is good for the really fine fur so now we've got that so i'm going to now pop in some darker gray for this i'm using the pro color gunmetal and this is going to start showing where the shadows are on the curls. So I'm just going to start off. So on this curl here, just going to start bringing some light strokes down like that. And I can just see that that's where the dark is going to be. So all of this area will be black and that will give the shadow with between the curls. And then all these light bits that we're drawing here will be lifted out like over here. So you'll see that um, all the curls come out and that's where they hit the light basically. So you can see it is really simple. It's just a case of layering, knowing what colors to use and you just need to go in certain directions basically. So, See, there's a darker bit here. So I'm just going to add that in like that. I'm just going to, and these curls here are a bit dark. So I'm just going to go over with the gray in the direction that I've drawn it. Again, this one's a bit darker on this side. So I'm going to do this. And here as well. So now we've got those colours down, we are going to go for the black, which is here. <laughs> I put it down and I couldn't find it. Right, there we go. So um, this is the light fast black there. And what I'll do now is you've got these two lighter curls that I drew. And I'm just going to go heavy on the black between them like that. Now, both these curls are curling that way. So I'm just bringing the black like that. And this one goes that way. And then this one goes that way. So it's like an S shape. So I'm just, oh, have we lost? If you can still hear me, I'm sorry, we're having a few technical. Okay, I think we're back. <laughs> Hi guys, I think we're back now. Hopefully. Yeah? Okay, well hopefully you can hear me. Um sorry about that. Yeah. Of all the times for the internet to go down, <laughs> it would be now, wouldn't it? Um, so I don't know when you lost us, but I'll carry on anyway. And if there's anything that 
you know, I've, you might have missed or you're not sure about, just ask me a question, let me know. So we'll carry on now anyway. So what I was just saying before the internet went down is that um, I've got these two curls here that I've drawn, the light curls, and I've just gone over it between them with the black like that. Now, this curl goes this way and this curl goes that way like that. So it's like an S shape. So I'm going to bring the black down and just do this S here like that and then bring it up a little bit that way, like that. And then again, it comes this way and then it curls back around there and then back to this one like that. And it just helps you figure out the flow of the different curls. So I do that with the don't like fast, like that. And then I go in with the ivory black studio pencil, that one, um, because like I said, it's good for fine fur. So, and I just flick like that. Just flick in the direction the furs go in, in the direction you've drawn the curls. And it just blends it into the dark like that. And sometimes it might look a little bit light. So I just do a few little strokes like that over it. And then this curl goes that way. So I'll just flick like that. And it blends it in. And again here, just flick like that there. So I'm going to do the same around here. So just you know, go right in with the black there. Going up to this one. Everything's going this direction here. There. And then you've got this harsh line here, which you don't want, so you just flick and blend it like that and then you can see this was like this a second ago and now it's blended into these curls here and you've got these dark shadows between all the curls now I'm just going to go around the edge of this one here I've gone back to my Derwent Light Fast Black Pencil, by the way. I'm just going to drag that like that. And then I've got this bit here. So you've got a curl here and you've got a curl there. So just go around the edge of that one. And it's just all about knowing the direction the fur is going. But, you know, by the time you've got to this point and this is the black, so it's like the most permanent colour you'll be using. But by this point, you know which way you've drawn the fur. So it's absolutely fine. Jess, sorry. We've got a question regarding light fast. Yeah. Um, would you recommend kind of starting starting with the select few colours as a kind of intro set? Or um, would you recommend um, going for kind of a really diverse range of colours in, in the light fast pencils? Um, I think it depends what you're drawing, really. If you're, if you, for example, if you're wanting to draw flowers, which have like loads of different colours in, um, I would recommend, you know, getting one of the bigger sets. But if you're looking to draw more select things like fur, so if you only want to draw like black or brown fur or anything, I would say get probably the 24 tin and then you can buy all the pencils individually. So any that don't come in the tin, uh, so I think there's a, like one grey in the tin, which I think is the mist. So if you feel like you need more greys, you can buy them individually and just buy the ones you need or want. And it also works out well because then you can try them different colours out. But I definitely recommend, um, like if you're just starting out, I think it's always good to have good materials because when I first started, um, five years ago is actually my five year business anniversary today according to LinkedIn so five years ago when I started I had um, a set of 40 Derwent pencils they were just mix and match ones that I bought um, all sorts of types even like the watercolor ones I had um, and just a pad of paper that's all I needed and all I used to start my business off and then as it grew I bought more pencils 
more colours. But as I've, I've found that the more colours I had available to me, the better my work became because I could put more colours into all the pictures. And um, it just shows that there is a lot of colour, you know, in all um, fur and, you know, all the animals I've drawn at least. And now I'm drawing giant petals. There's even more colours involved. But I mean, like, you know, you don't want to be too daunted to start with by loads and loads and loads of colours if you're not sure. But I definitely recommend getting a good, um, like, professional set, like a, a Derwent set. Because if you buy it yourself, like cheap pencils or anything, your work's not going to be as good. You'll get frustrated with yourself, basically. That's what I've found anyway. And that's what, um, speaking to other professional artists, a lot of them have said that as well. I'm just doing another curl here. You might find that as you're doing these curls and you get more comfortable with it, um, you start to make up a few so if you think oh I want an extra one there or there's only a few like scraggly bits here I'd rather do like a whole big curl you can do that it's fine you know artistic license and all that it's brilliant so I'm just going to do a few more bits on this and then I'm going to move on to the white fur just putting some purple on so with this you can see that I've started off with the light first mist that was my base colour. Then I've gone on to the mid ultramarine. Then I used the um, Imperial Purple Derwent Studio, just because that's a really nice colour. I like that colour. And then I did a little bit of the yellow ochre in some areas, just to bring in like a little bit of brown where the sunlight might hit the fur. Then I went to the gunmetal, the dark grey. So you can see we've gradually like, building up our colours, getting darker. And then I used the Derwent Light First Black and the Studio Ivory Black for the finer areas there. So I'm just going to finish off this one curl, join it together, and then we'll go on to the white fur. So if anyone's got any more questions about this one, um, just ask now before we move on to the white fur. So where are we with this one? So I'm going to add a little bit, a little bit of yellow ochre into this one here. So like I said, you're just layering and you're mixing your colours on the paper rather than mixing it on a paint palette if you're a painter. It's a different process and it does take longer. But to be honest, once you start and you get into it, you'll find it's incredibly therapeutic, especially doing curls, because once you figure out the technique, you just you can switch off and you know it's just the hours fly by <laughs> so this curl's going this way this one's going down this way so i'm just doing these u shapes like this like this here and then i'll get my studio pencil and i'm just gonna flick and then I'm going to flick up this way, like that. Cool. And then I'm just going to do a few strokes of black on this one just to make it very slightly darker. And you can find that if you're going through and you find that you're lighter areas look too light you can just you know go over a little bit with the the black just a few strokes will do it and there you go so you can see like this one curls around here and then this one folds over but you don't notice that until you put the darker areas in and then it all starts to come together so there we go so that was about half an hour with me talking and a few internet issues and i've done this section here so you can see it just take time just be patient with it and uh, you'll get it so i'll just try and zoom in a little bit more there so you can see and there we go hopefully everyone can see that okay Right, and now I'm going to swap over, I'll zoom back out a little bit, and then I'm going to swap over to 
the white pencil, uh, the white fur even, <laughs> which you don't use a white pencil for, for. No white pencils will be used. Jess, we've got another question. Yeah. Do you coat, do you coat the finished piece with anything to avoid smudging, like an adhesive or anything like that? Yes. Or would you, or would you say that that's quite that the, the pencils are quite permanent as they are once you've finished? Um, well, it's very, it's a very personal choice. I know some artists don't, some artists do. Um, I personally do when it's a commission, especially if it's not being framed, because um, if like the people handle it, they might like you know touch it and it might just come, a bit of pigment might come off and it might smudge a little bit. Um, but what I use is fixative spray um so i don't think don't do fixative spray as far as i know um please correct me if i'm wrong charlotte um no no that's right yeah you're yeah, right okay. <laughs> um but the yeah the fixative spray i use is windsor and newton fixative spray um and that yeah that works well but you have to be careful because sometimes um artists like some people say that it can affect the coloring very slightly i've never found that myself um, but like I say, it's down to personal preference. So if you need to use it or you want to try it out, just get a small can of it and try it. Or just um, use hairspray. That's the same stuff, basically. Just grab a can of hairspray and spray it on. I know it sounds scary, but, you know, I've done it in the past. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> so if I zoom in a bit, try and get the camera a bit straighter. We've right. got a couple more questions, if that's okay, Jess. Yeah, go for it. Um, do you use um, a blender or burnisher at all? Um, not for the coloured pencils, I don't. Uh, but I do for graphite, which I'll be showing in next week's tutorial. Um, don't like you. Uh, don't have these, um, you know, smudger sticks. I can't remember the technical name. I call it a smudging stick, and uh, it's basically like a paper one. And then when it gets dirty you can just sand it and clean it um, with the sander. So, but yeah, I'll be showing that next week. Thank you. And then the other question was, what tape are you using to cover the outside of the paper, please? Yeah, I was actually wondering when someone would ask that question. <laughs> it's just painter's tape. It's delicate surface painter's tape, uh, which you can get from any like hardware store or on Amazon. Um, and I like using it when I'm doing these square pieces because in You've got the satisfying job of peeling it off and the edges being really neat. And it doesn't rip the paper either. So you can, as long as you don't yank it off, if you just peel it, you know, it won't, it won't rip. It's absolutely fine. Right, so I'm going to get on to this one. Please keep asking questions if you have anything in mind. Uh, yeah, but send them to Derwent, not, not to Pritchard, to Derwent. So I'm just going to, um, this pencil eraser has got black on it now from um, the other one. So I could either sharpen it, which I don't feel like I need to, so I'm just gonna rub it on this paper here. And, oh, you can't see it. Right, I'll do it here so you can see it. And then that just cleans it all off. Like that, there we go. Right, so uh, white fur is a lot more delicate than black fur to do. So with the black fur, you can see I was like really going in with the black and scribbling down and my base layer, I was just sort of scribbling it down. Whereas this one, you want the white to show through. So you need to be a lot more cautious with it. And you also don't want your outline showing on it. So I do get rid of it. So my outlines now are very, very faint. You can't see them so much, so they won't show through. And I'm just going to show you the curls here. So again, I'm basically going to be using very, very similar colours um, to the black one. So I'm just going to quickly sharpen this pencil. I don't need it. Well, it is quite sharp, but I was going to say I don't need it too sharp, but <laughs> I've done it quite sharp. So this one is the same technique where you go in the direction that the curls are going in. So I've got a curl curving this way, but like I say, you're not going to 
scribble it in, you're just going to be light with it. So I'm just going to do light strokes, leave a slight space between them, like that there. And then I've got one coming this way here. Like so. So I've, this one um, is more of a complicated curl, as I would call it. So you, it kind of kinks in the middle. So you just, rather than trying to do it all in one go, you just do strokes that way. And then from there you go so you're up to down. And then from here you go up and down like that. And then you've got that curl there like that. And I'm going to do a few more. If I get rid of a few more outlines, I can do a few more around this area. I might do this big curl here as well. So this one might be slightly hard to see on the camera because it's light, but hopefully you can see what I'm doing. So I've got a curl here that goes this way, and then I've got a curl here that goes that way and then this bit in the middle is dark so I'm not going to use this mist for it I'm going to use a different colour so I'm just going to go over this one again here and then I've got a nice one here which mimics this one but it's backwards so I'll curl this way like that and then I go down to this point and then I go like that there I'm just got a curl around there like that. Now, obviously, when you're doing this yourself, you might see the curls differently to me, and you might think they're going different directions to what I'm seeing, which is perfectly fine. You just got to do it how you're comfortable doing it and how you see fit, basically. So now, what I will mention about white fur is it reflects like anything around it. So, for example, if there was some grass. Um, like here, it from this area here, it would like reflect, reflect the green. So you'd have bits of green here. Um, this fur is reflecting the sky. I can see it's like got some blue in it, and it's also got um, some brown. Probably like picking up the grass a little bit, but you know because it's further away, it looks a bit more brown and yellow ochre. So you want to put those colours in the fur. Now I'm going to go back and use ultramarine again and I'm just going to do a few strokes just lightly don't want too much there we go like that because you don't want it to look really really blue you just want a hint of blue like so and then like I said before just follow the base um, strokes that you put down now I'm not going to put any blue on this one because I can see a bit more um, sort of like a yellow ochre colour and that's what I'll be using for it and the same with this one. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go in with the Don't Light Fast Yellow Ochre and I'm going to just put a little bit there and then stroke this way. It's just all about the delicate strokes like that. Add them all and then this one up here has got a bit. And then, like before, if you go a bit too far, just use your pencil eraser like that. Which is just great for anything. I mean, even if you're drawing a car and you've got like the car bonnet and you want to put a bit of a shine on it, you just go in with the eraser and just, you know, add a little shine to it because it takes the uh, top layer of pigment off. Just as an example. So, now I'm going to go in. Now this is the Derwent drawing pencil. Oh, there you go, example of that. Uh, this is the cool grey and I've also got the warm grey. So it depends on, like I say, if it's reflecting warm light or cold light. Now this white fur is reflecting, it's quite a warm white but just with the bits of blue in that show reflect the sky. So that's where like it can trip you up basically you see the blue and you think oh it's cooler but actually you look at the greys and the greys tell you whether it's a warm or cool light and the blue is just what it's reflecting so i'm going to go in with the warm gray of the current drawing pencils that's warm gray 7010 it's called 
and this will be where the darker areas are so again as I did on the black fur I'm just going to go in and just go on the curl where it was it is slightly darker on the curls so here like this And then I'm just going to flick like that and this way. And again, I'm just going to flick. Hopefully you can see that okay, what I'm doing. And then like I say, in the middle bit here, um, it's a bit darker. So I'm actually going to use the warm grey and just go in. And because it's like um, a circular shape here, so you've got the fur going that way and the fur going that way. So I'm going to curl this way like that and then you go straight in the middle and then curl up to that bit of fur there. Now you've got a curl coming up here and this curl goes into it. Now you want a bit of shadow here so you can tell that this curl kind of goes underneath it. So I'm just going to do a, bit of, a little bit of warm grey like that just flick it there and then you've got this nice bit of shadow and then I can bring this middle section up like that and then fan it out to this curl here. Now to get it that little bit more dark I'm going to go in with the Derwent Pro Colour Gunmetal. This is slightly darker. Just add that little bit more shadow. And again, I'm following the same lines as I did before. So you curve this way and then you go straight and then start curving out to the other curl, which is just here. Like that. Now we've got a curl that goes this way here. like that there so I'm just going to put that in because then I can add in the darker area here like that so I've used the mist again that's my base colour and I always use the same base colour throughout the whole piece because uh, it keeps it consistent then and then I am going to you can see that there's a little bit of sort of a golden brown so I'm going to use yellow ochre little don't like fast yellow ochre again like that and then I can go straight in with the warm grey. Now the Derwent drawing pencils are also quite soft and nice and their colour range is very geared towards animals. It's very, there's lots of greys and browns. It's like the whole range is sort of that basic and a bit of black. Um, so, I mean, any grey or brown that you need will be in one of these sets. Um, they're pretty good. And I think there's even... An animal I think it's a fox or something that's on the tin so yeah that's shows you that it's good for animals um, and I have a, a whole set of Derwent drawing pencils and they are nice to use you can't get as hard a tip on them as the studio pencils they are very much uh, soft but when you're doing like chunks of fur then it works out fine it's, you just need the harder pencils when you're doing the flicks basically so here we go now I've gone a bit too far with that so as before I'm just going to use my pencil eraser and just bring it back a little bit there just to define this curl here because it all blended in a bit too much so I'm just going to follow that curl up there like that and then just do one bit there there we go and then I might go in with the gunmetal just mimic the curve a little bit of this curl here just to bring it out and there we go cool that's that one there now now we want to attach these curls to these curls basically here so we're going to do a similar process again and um, you're looking at the direction the fur is going and I'm going to use the warm grey. I'm just going to 
look in fact actually I'm gonna use mist so just leave a slight gap between your curls so you know exactly where they are when you're using the same color as your base color and then I'll go in with the warm gray so these two curls are going this way and then they keep coming around that way like that Sure. Um, I think our internet's coming back up, so I'll go off the hotspot now and then we'll reconnect in one second again. <laughs> Okay, I think we're back now. We yeah, we were having to uh, hotspot on a phone before, and now the internet's come back up. We've uh, connected back. Hopefully, it's okay. Um, yeah, like I said, of all the evenings for this to happen, would be this evening, but never mind. <laughs> right. So, where was I? Okay, so I'm just going to go in with a bit of dark here to define this bit. Here. So this is a darker area of the um, white curls. So I'm just showing you now what the darker area is, and then I'm going to jump down here in a second, and I'm going to show you what it's like to draw the lighter areas. So it will look very grey um, against the white paper. You might think, oh, it's not white fur, it's, it's grey fur, but the darker areas will look grey. Don't panic. And if you think it's too far, like I say, just use the Derwent pencil eraser, or the Derwent Electric Eraser if it's really too dark. So I'm just going to join that curl to there. There's a little bit of shadow on this one. I don't want too much more on that now. And then I'm just going to flick up here like that. There we go. So you can see, like compared to this section here, uh, this one's got a lot more uh, of the dark grey in it because uh, there's a lot more shadows to it so i hope that's making sense so far uh, if it doesn't and again if you've got any questions please just uh, message derwent and charlotte will and um, read your questions out to me so i'm going to go down here now where there's a few lighter curls and to show uh how sort of you to put those together basically it's very much the same colors it's just applying the colors and just having a lighter hand at it so I'm just going to rub out my outlines a little bit so they're very faint so I can see them but they won't show up once I put the pencil on so again I'll go in with my mist so this one here this is a quite a big curl so this one curls like this it's got um, a couple of kinks to it this one so and then do that there and there's actually a curl that goes there which is quite nice so this one's kink to there and then it goes up and kinks down again and then there's this one here which just curls out and then we've got a nice swooshy curl here and you just got to be careful with the lighter areas you don't go too gray or too dark even because it will look a bit gray oh sorry We'll zoom back out and then we can see it. By you. Is that in focus? Cool, right. Where are we? We're here. So, zoom. there we go. Cool, right, we'll carry on now. So, yeah. There's a, this bit here and then this bit here kinks out then you've got a nice curl here and then you've got a nice a curl here like that so we'll do those and then to join up to this fur here there's actually um, a tuft of fur 
that kind of fans out basically. So we're just going to do that as well. So it starts going this way and then it comes up here and then fans out that way. I'm just going to do a time check. Right, we've got, well, we've got five minutes left. So I'll just go through this and then um, we'll have to wrap up. Very sorry about all the internet issues we've had this evening, guys. Um, yeah, not a lot we can do about it when the internet goes down, but um, hopefully you have managed to learn from this. So anyway, I'll quickly go through this bit now as we've only got five minutes left. So I'm going to put in the yellow ochre because like I say, it's um, quite like warm fur and there's bits of yellow in it. Um, it's basically just use your eye, just look at the fur, look at what colours you see in it. And as the more you do, the more you'll, more colours you'll see basically. When you start off, you just, it's hard to see these colours at all. And then as your eye trains to it, you do pick them up. And I mean, just experiment. If you can't see the colours, but you think they should be there, just put a bit in, just be light with it and um, see if it works. It's all about experimenting, having fun. Just be patient with it and it will be fine. You just, like they say, practice makes perfect. So you just keep practising. So that's that fun there. Now there's a little bit of yellow ochre in the uh, kinks here, but not too much. And then I'm going to go in with the warm grey, but really, really, really lightly. So just to define it a little bit. So just super duper light. Following the direction of the fur that you've already put down. There we go. That's probably enough there. So here, this fur comes down this way and this one fans out this way. And you want a shadow between the two to show that, you know, this bit of fur is going underneath that one. So because this bit of fur's quite got a defined line, I'm just going to do this line here. And then, so if I try and just zoom the camera in. Cool. And is that still in focus? All the way. Cool, right. So, got a define line here, and then I'm just gonna do strokes like that, just little, little, little strokes. There we go. Don't want to bring it out too far. And then you can see you've got this nice shadow underneath. Like that. And then for the other shadows, I'm basically just going to use mist again, which is my base colour, but I'm going to apply more pressure. So you see it's darker, but it's not as dark as the colours up here, which were warm grey and gunmetal. So, and then I'm going to do the same here. And now, so um, this is fanned out this way and it comes into this curl here. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm just going to bring them, blend them together. So they, this one's starting off going that way and this one ends going that way. So you, you draw that way, basically. Just do strokes like that. And then curl it round up to this one here. And then I'm just going to add a bit of shadow here. Just follow the line you've created like that. So you can see how much lighter the shadows are here to here. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre into these shadows just to give them a little bit of colour to match the curls around it. Again, following the same strokes that I made earlier. And there, so you can see now, hopefully, oh, there we go, there we go, <laughs> the difference between these shadows on this fur and the shadows here. You can so it shows that when you're doing white fur, it just shows the different tones you can create. Um, and it all just depends on the grades you're using and the amount of pressure you use. Uh, but like I say, experiment. If you do a little bit and you find it doesn't go right and you get frustrated, leave that bit, move on to the next bit there like that. So we've got a minute left. So um, if we now go back on to me, if that's okay. And we'll wrap up. Cool. So you can see me again now. Um, I hope that was okay and you learned something. And thanks for all your questions as well. Um, 
And also, uh, if you want to come back for another tutorial with me, and hopefully we won't have internet issues this time, um, we've got another tutorial at the same time next Thursday, which is going to be drawing with graphite pencil and coloured pencil. And I'm going to teach how to draw a bumblebee on a flower, which I've drawn in the past and um, it was a very popular piece and I do love it, it's very cute. So yeah, I'll show you how to do that in graphite pencil and it will teach you how to look at tones and then we can go to the coloured pencil and like look at all the different colours within a flower and it's a purple flower and obviously yellow and black bumblebee, so there'll be quite a few colours used in that one. And then um, the week after I've got another tutorial, which I think is fully booked now, uh, but that one's to draw, uh, how to draw animal eyes. So if anyone of you, if any of you are booked onto that, I uh, look forward to having you there. And the final one, um, which will be the last Thursday in March, I think it's the 25th at 7 p.m., we are going to be doing uh, drawing on black paper and white paper. And I'm going to be showing you how to draw a lion on those. So if you fancy learning how to draw a lion's mane and lion's fur, um, please look onto that one and join us for that. Um, I think that's all. And I want to say thanks so much for joining. Um, it's been nice. And again, sorry for the internet issues, but I, I've enjoyed myself anyway. And it's been very nice teaching you all. So I think we'll leave it there. And um, yeah, happy drawing. And if you do uh, have a go at any of these and you've downloaded the reference images and the outlines, please, like if you put it on Instagram, please tag me. And I'm sure Derwent would like you to tag them as well and would like to see what you do and what you create. And that'd be lovely. Right, so enjoy the rest of your evening, guys. And uh, thanks very much for joining me. Right, bye.